Welcome to the Divine Lifestyles Podcast. I'm your host, Tara Mikulski. Together with my guest experts, I cover topics ranging from cutting edge healing modalities to hormonal harmony, to nutrition and plant medicine, to mindfulness and spirituality. My goal is to educate and inspire so you can create your own divine lifestyle. It's time to dive inward, rewire your brain, and heal from the inside out. Welcome to the Divine Lifestyles Podcast. I'm your host, Tara Migalski, and today I am joined by Elizabeth King, Certified Fertility Health Coach and Educator, ICF Certified Life Coach, CEO and Founder of Fertility Coach Academy, host of the Creation Innovation Podcast, and Psych K Facilitator. Elizabeth is recognized as one of the top fertility coaches in the world. She has helped women of all backgrounds in more than 20 countries conceive naturally through one-on-one coaching and becoming certified fertility coaches. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth, for being here today. Before we deep dive into fertility, can you share a little bit more about your story and how did you get into this line of work? Yeah. So I recognized the last few years as I had already been doing fertility coaching that I, it really started when I was 19 and my sister was diagnosed with a rare form of cervical cancer. I didn't know what a cervix was at that time. So I was kind of thrown into this whole process of fertility and meeting with a fertility doctor about how potentially we could have her children for her, right? They said they were going to keep her ovaries. And, you know, if we, there's four sisters all together. So if the three other of us were potentially to put our eggs with her husband's sperm at that time, how would that look and whatever? So again, at 19, meeting in this situation and talking through this, planted that seed of this really significant uh, experience of recognizing that not everybody is able to have children. And Mm. that kind of forward casted people coming into my life at different times, starting at that age that were having different stories and situations around that. Fast forward to when I was 30, I had just been divorced and went to go talk to that same doctor actually about freezing my eggs. And he said, you're too young, come back later. And I came back at 36, still single, and went through the IVF process on my own to freeze 11 eggs at that time. And then went on to meeting my husband at 39 and a half, having a fibroid surgery, which allowed me to conceive because I, my regular OB had told me that the fibroids I had were not an issue. I knew in my gut that something was wrong. So I went back to that same fertility doctor again. At this point, we've become fast friends. (laughs) And he said, actually, those fibroids are an issue because of where they're located. And they are located in the uterine wall. So you have a less likely chance for an embryo to attach there. So we did that surgery with a oncologist, a gynecological oncologist, because that was what was recommended to me based on the technology that they have to prevent less scar tissue, to really the the machinery and whatnot to do it as carefully as possible. And then the next available month that we were able to try, I got pregnant naturally at 41 with my first child. Um... Subsequently, went on to have miscarriages and struggles through that. And after that first miscarriage is really when I transformed my previous 15-year life coach business into really focusing on fertility. And then went on to having a total of three children, um, three live births, and here we are now. So this is now really my purpose and mission to help people to figure out what what road they need to go down in order to conceive, whether that's naturally or through ART or whatever it may be. Um, There's so many amazing options now. So, Yeah. Well, let's dive into that because I know you know a little bit about my story. We have spoken before. I also, 
I do want to say this while we're filming because I think it's important. I also had a fibroid that I was told for many years, about eight years, that it was fine and that it wasn't going to, um, that, that it would cause more damage if I was to mm -hmm. um, remove it, you know, scar tissue. So I flew out to LA and I did radio frequency ablation and I did all these things with Dr. Bruce Lee, the guy who created it. And then years later, I ended up having it removed about a year ago because the actual fibroid wasn't growing anymore, but it still was causing a lot of inflammation in my uterus. So I just like to have these conversations because I kind of wish that I had gotten that taken out years prior. I was trying to, you know, conserve my womb. Um, but ultimately, I think that the chemicals and hormones that were given off from the inflammation from the tissue was just as detrimental for me as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think fibroids in general kind of get very underplayed unless people have a uterus that's, you know, really overtaken by them. And in some cases have to do a hysterectomy just to, you know, really take care of that. But also the uterus has more blood vessels than any other part of our body. So knowing that there's something in there that's foreign, that is disrupting the environment, so to speak, my opinion, of course, is no matter how small that is, we want to try to eliminate that, right? If, if, even if you're not trying to conceive, right? Because it's affecting our cycle. It's affecting the hormones. It's a, a disruptor there and it's causing inflammation, as you say. A lot of doctors, I think, shy away from pointing them to what I did, which was a gynecological oncologist, which for anybody who doesn't know is a cancer doctor that specializes in those areas for women. Um, and a lot of them actually may not do those types of surgeries for everybody because people would be coming in all the time that didn't have cancer. However, if you are able to find somebody who's willing to do that, I highly suggest it, again, for that reason, the scar tissue, the watching out for different areas and making sure that they're really honing in on what needs to be done in there. Not to say that there aren't regular gynecologists that have done many, many surgeries to remove fibroids, of course, but they, they have a different specialty. You know, if somebody is trained to specifically know those areas and what's happening versus, you know, they studied gynecological education and fibroids were just one area of that, so to speak. So I would do some digging on doctors and what options you have to get those removed and go with your gut. You know, if something's telling you it doesn't feel right or something's just off, follow that. Yeah. And I'm going to be an open book in this interview because I think that, you know, this is the perfect opportunity. I just came out of six rounds of IVF mm -hmm. and chromosomally, you know, a lot of abnormal embryos. We have a few, we have one that is normal and then some that are mosaic and, and, you know, and I just realized I couldn't, I really can't do this anymore. I can't do the IVF journey. And I, I know you've mentioned something called ART and I had actually not heard of that. What is ART? Artificial reproductive technology. So that's essentially the word the overarching word for anything around IVF, egg freezing, okay. you know, everything that you just went through, through yeah. is considered ART. I'm sorry to hear that because I know that the emotional journey of going through what you just went through, people don't understand unless you've been through that. And the ups and downs and the the really the reality of those ups and downs is literally a day by day every other day sit and wait to see what your results are going to be sit with that process what that means there's so much to it that people don't take into consideration of why it is such a a huge undertaking i think i mentioned to you when we spoke before that the mayo clinic the excuse me the mayo clinic did a study that shows that people that are going through fertility issues is the same as a cancer patient, that level of stress that they're under. And that's why I am so passionate about helping people as a coach through the journey, because you really do need to have that somebody that's talking through it with you to keep your nervous system in check and your cortisol systems, because 
there you do have a life outside of fertility and sometimes when you're on that track you your calendar if your life is always based around when your next retrieval is what's happening when's your next transfer etc cetera, etc cetera. and we lose ourselves in that process and then not only lose yourself but sometimes the the burden the heaviness the weight of the experience overtakes somebody absolutely I would love to know what you believe to be the number one cause of infertility that you see with your patients. It's all across the board, unfortunately. I, I wish it was as simple as that. For some people, it's a emotional block. For some people, it's a spiritual block. For some people, it's a physical. I don't see the physical so much because most people that come to me say, Elizabeth, I've done every single thing. I have checked every single box. They're mostly very type A personalities. They've done all the things they can do. They've done all the diets. They've, you know, changed their workout. They've, you name it, and they've done it. So really, it's then a matter of what is underlying there? Is there something generational that you may be carrying that you're not even aware of? Is it something around your partner that you're not aware of? You know, there's so many different aspects. And really, as we unlayer that onion to figure out what is there, a lot comes up. And people are always surprised by, oh, I really thought that my heaviness was around fertility. But really, it's about, you know, my relationship with my mom or what happened to me when I was a child or something of that nature. And then as you start to heal those other aspects, your body starts to open up a little bit differently and receive this aspect of whether that's your own fertility or becoming a mother in some other way. But really, it's it's so unique for everyone. It really, truly is. Yeah, I, um, I've been digging a lot into, you know, hormonal nutrition. I'm getting certified for that. And just really understanding, because I did a lot of tests and the tests were saying that you know, I had adrenal fatigue, mm -hmm. um, which I think was because of all of the rounds. I believe that. Uh, yeah, I think it was a lot because of the rounds. And so I've just been like, you know, pulling back the diet, all of that, trying to understand where, you know, how I can do this more naturally. Um, there's also some trauma that I suffered with my father's death and things of that nature. So just really allowing my body to kind of re reheal and remend itself. So I think it'd be great to learn a little bit more about your, about what you do that's different. Cause I know that you have a very different approach than other fertility coaches and specialists. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your certifications and, you know, the site K facilitation. Yes. So I really believe in the whole picture. I am love everything holistic, but I also know and really believe in the medical side as well. So if, because I've seen so many people that have gone three to seven years down the road saying, I really want to get pregnant naturally, or I don't want to put this in my body. And so I'm not doing this or that only to find out they have a block tube or something. So I really do think, and I know you've done this already, you've been through six rounds, so you've been seen by doctors, but I really do start with the foundation of let's see the lay of the land. Is everything clear? Everything good? You have no other underlying medical issue that needs to be addressed. Whether that's, um, you know, sometimes an underlying insulin resistance that could be similar to PCOS, for example, and then they just get on a low grade medication and then they're pregnant within a couple of months. So there's a lot of different aspects of where we start depending on where somebody is coming to me from. So we want to see they get checked out by their fertility doctor specifically, not a regular OB. I really want them to see a specialist. And then we go through the blood work, look at the hormone, hormones. Again, you want to make sure that you're always doing your blood work on day two or day three of your cycle. So no matter what, I still, I'm not trying to have children anymore, but I always get my hormones checked on day two or day three of my cycle. So I can know from, you know, year to year or week, month to month, whenever I'm doing blood work, that it's apples to apples, not something else. And you, most OBs will not suggest that to you. So you need to advocate for yourself in that way. I also am a huge believer in doing a um, 
food sensitivity test right out the gate. We want to make sure that anything that you're ingesting is not harming or causing more inflammation. I've been to many um, reproductive medical conferences, listening to the doctors that do the research. A lot of the research is showing now that the reason for inflammation in the ovaries and the eggs is not necessarily because of our age, but just the inflammation in our body. So as we age, the inflammation gets worse. If we can lower that inflammation, the health quality of your egg should be better um, given everything else being healthy. So we want to really make sure that you're eating right for your specific body, not just Googling what is a fertility diet tell me to do. Because myself, for example, I'm highly sensitive to eggs. So if I was following a online fertility diet, my body would be crazy because I would be having all kinds of issues. So you really want to look into your specific body. Once we get all of that sort of like hard stuff out of the way, the supplements, make sure most people, again, are over supplementing themselves rather than doing what's right for them. So we take a look at everything that they're taking and usually pare that down. Sometimes we add things, again, always naturally. And then we get into the the work around the spiritual emotional work. And that's where the Psych K facilitation comes into play. And what that is, is really reprogramming subconscious thoughts that you may or may not even be aware of that you have. It's not always necessary for us to know that trauma came from X or whatnot. What really matters is that we just reprogram that and heal it because from the age of two years old and even in epigenetics, you know, when we're in utero, we, we take on the people that are around us, their programming. And that's why it's so important that we choose conscious languaging when we're around other people and children, especially because they're taking that on. So we look at what it is in your specific orbit, your world that needs to be healed. And we just start going through that. What I tell people is make a list of the recurring thoughts in your head every day. Is it around your age, which most people for fertility, I'm just using, for example, age, carrying a baby, um, being a good mom. Some people, it's not even about the pregnancy or getting pregnant. It's further down the line. So it's those sorts of things. But also, do you have body issues? Do you have um, relationship things? Are you worried about your sister-in-law or your ex, your current husband's ex-wife, whatever it is, like what is going on in your thoughts day to day? And we just start going through all of those. The beauty of Psych K is that it's something for most people can be a one and done balance versus something like hypnosis usually takes a little longer, maybe multiple sessions. Um, Emotional tapping can sometimes take a little bit longer with multiple sessions and or EMDR, you need to get really into that feeling of the trauma in order to heal it. With Psych K, you don't really, you actually don't need to do that unless we're doing a specific balance for transforming a specific situation that somebody really needs to tap into that specifically to get the healing from that. So it's a really beautiful, easy lift. I like to be able to push that easy button on things. So we don't feel again, so heavy. We, there's already so much heaviness around fertility and just to be able to feel a little lighter and to know that there's some energy work working with you, the, the ability for our body to heal itself when we're giving it, giving it that extra, um, direction, so to speak, to move in that way, we recreate these neuro nets in our brain. And that's really what it is. The thoughts have created little n- neuro nets. I, I always kind of say it like a, a fishing net you see where the, they put the net down in the ocean and it grabs all these fish or crab or lobster. I don't know. <laughs> so we're re- trying to recreate that in our brain in a different area in a positive way with different thoughts. I love that. I've got an exciting offer for all of my listeners. 
the free Divine Daily Practices video series. Get simple practices to release anxious thoughts, sharpen your intuition, and rewire your nervous system in less than 10 minutes a day. Come on over to my website at divinelifestyles.com forward slash divine daily practices. And over the next week, you'll receive a complimentary self care system to drop into your authentic self and activate your divine intuitive wisdom. I hope you enjoy. So I'm going to be your, your case study. So, um, for someone like me who has been through the six rounds of IVF, I have endometriosis. So nutrition is like a huge component, right? So, um, I've been studying and learning a little bit about my body and where I am as of today. And where I think I'm at today is where I have an excess of estrogen Mm -hmm. and I have lower cortisol and lower progesterone. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you the quick history because then I want to get your, your um, feedback of what you think would be, you would work with me on. Sure. So did a couple rounds, got one good quality, um, you know, normal embryo. Did a, did more rounds and got ones that had like missing one chromosome and then had a duplicate of another. So I still I have three of them on ice because I know sometimes they can um, they can correct in the womb. So, but the more times that I was doing IVF, they started my numbers started to go down. Of course, I've been getting older. I'm going to be 43, and I started to just feel my body becoming really taxed. I've been pregnant twice naturally, so there's nothing, no blockage, um, but I've miscarried very early on. My last one was at around nine and a half weeks. And um, I've been doing some body work. I definitely am interested in doing Psych K with you as well. Um, And I've really tightened up. I've done the elimination diet and I've done like every test you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Um you know, some different food tests, some GI tests and all of that. And what they have found is that there was some issues, like there's some um, digestion issues, which I've always had. Um, And so maybe not getting all of the nutrients from my supplements. So I'm working on repairing, you know, my just my digestive system now Mm -hmm. and um, giving my body the time to heal because I have a little bit of that adrenal fatigue. Yes. So for someone like me, what would you recommend as like a good next step? So I'm just writing this down for later um, because I would first test, let's see, is, is the digestion related to your fertility? We do know that the gut health is related to fertility. Most, again, fertility doctors are not going to ask you anything about that. And that's a frustration of mine. I also had serious gut issues and not one fertility doctor that I had ever been to had ever asked me like, oh, how's your digestion? Well, I have diarrhea nine times a day. That's probably a problem, right? So again, because- My issue was never, I never had any symptoms. Okay. Maybe a little bit of bloating in my lower gut. So I was thinking food allergies. Yeah. Well, that too, I don't know if you've looked into- um, SIBO, S-I-B-O, it's small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Cause that a big symptom of that is bloating. Um, but I, first, what I would do with you is let's see, is there a direct link of your digestion to fertility? My kind of gut feeling is no, but it should be addressed anyway, but that's what I would work with for you. So if we were to connect when on insight K we would essentially do kinesiology and muscle testing for you. And I would tap into your higher self and get permission from you to basically test on myself to know, is that what's happening with you? And then we would clear that and or go through is whatever Tara is doing now. Is that what's working for her? Does she need something else? Um, Is she with the right doctor? Are you going down the right path? Do you need to you know, abort mission and go somewhere else and do something else. Right. Because I think when we're on a fertility path too, we get so, um, we want to attack, attack every single option to make sure, again, we've checked that box, right? So we've gone down this road, we've taken care of the digestion stuff. We know that that's that, but if that's really kind of a low 
low hanging fruit, so to speak, that's not really the issue, then I'd rather see you be putting your effort into something else, somewhere else that could be more helpful for you. Maybe it's, I don't know, acupuncture, let's say, and, and getting the, the blood flowing in that area because you've had endometriosis and fibroids, right? There's something there that is saying in that region of your area, your, that area of your body that something hasn't been flowing right for you, right? Yeah. What is that? Why is that? Is there generational stuff that generational trauma, maybe it's not even your trauma that you took on that is causing these fibroids and endometriosis, right? Or is it something like you said, this, the, the estrogen progesterone, the cortisol, I believe is probably because of what you've been through in this and your father passing away and that sort of thing causes those issues with cortisol. Um, but really getting to the, the, emotional, spiritual level of why is that happening to you, right? You're seemingly a very healthy person. What's, do we need to do a womb healing for you to really get in to say for whoever, whatever lineage this is, whether it's Tara's or somebody else's, how do we clear this energy for her, right? So I've done multiple womb healings. Okay. I've done lots of energy work. I have done acupuncture for five years consistently. I do it once a week. I do Chinese medicine. I've seen a lot of healers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I um, I don't know. I personally feel like my journey is it's happening in divine timing. Um, I would be very interested. We'll, we'll connect after we hang up here, and I can send you some of my labs. Um, I was really thinking this had something to do with like my digestion and inflammation in the body. Um, that's kind of where I was feeling this, this was the issue. So now I'm on a elimination diet um, and I'm about to do a Pachi Karma cleanse. And I think I'm, again, I, so mm -hmm. I know how frustrating it is to be like, I've done all the healings, I've done all the things and it's just not working. And sometimes it's, Again, why isn't that working, right? And doing the elimination diets and all of that stuff is could be pretty stressful for not only you and your relationship and your social life, but your body sometimes, right? And sometimes we're okay with doing another type of diet or another type of cleanse, again, for the greater good of hoping that something shifts in this way. But really like what I it just feels a little bit heavy still, even when you say like, I've done all these things. And that's when it's just like, I, I have this vision of like, I'm banging my head against the wall. I don't want to do anymore. Right. I'm tired of doing all this stuff. Yeah. Like even when you're coming to a place of working with such a beautiful healer in a spiritual sense, whatever it may be, Reiki, there's so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. It just gets really, really exhausting because you're just hoping for that one thing to be what turns the corner and opens that door for you to say, okay, this is it, or this is your answer. This is why X, Y, Z has been happening or not happening. So I really hope for you that with this new path of the digestion situation that you are able to feel better emotionally, spiritually, physically, and what's happening? Yeah, for me, it's been a lot of, um, I'm just kind of accepting what's happening. And also, you know, diving, I would, I'll do, I would love to do a um, psyche session with you. But I'm also like at the point now where I'm like, hmm, I just want to feel good. I just want to feel healthy. And like the Pachi Karma cleanse is just going to help with the, you know, digestion, if it helps with fertility, amazing. Um, but I really do want to get these chemicals out of my system. More importantly for me right now is just getting my hormones balanced. Absolutely. Yeah. No matter yeah. what you do, who you are, what, where you are in your path of being a woman, it's so, so important to do that. I can't remember if we spoke about seed cycling last time we spoke as well. No, no. Tell me about so seed cycling is, I love it so much. Again, I'm not trying to conceive, but I do it myself also. And you basically take, you ingest certain types of seeds day one through 14 of your cycle and then others 14 through uh, 28. If you're on a 28 day cycle, most people are not, but you figure out what yours is. 
And it gives you estrogen in the beginning because that's what your body needs and then progesterone naturally at the end. So it's something that is, again, super easy to incorporate into your body, into your life, whether you're putting it in a smoothie. I put it on anything like it would be salt and pepper, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, salads, yogurt, I put it on enchiladas, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, again, a natural way to add in more of what we need, no matter who you are as a woman. If you have all your parts, we want to be giving, feeding it what it needs in that sense. So I think that that's something for most people that, you know, don't have really severe issues is really good to look at. I've seen many, many people get pregnant just from seed cycling, um, mm -hmm. you know, two to three months because it's helping their body just get that additional hormone balance that it needs that it wasn't getting prior. Now, the one other question that I would have for you that's come up in my head a couple of times is the, your husband. So assuming he's, he's been checked, he's taking supplements and all of those things as well. I think most people kind of take on this, this energy of it's me, right? I'm doing the boom healing. I'm doing all of these things. I show up for acupuncture all the time and whatnot. And the partner, the male in the relationship maybe gets their semen tested one time and then they're basically it's on you, right? The rest of the work is, okay, figure out what you need to do. But we also need to remember their sperm changes all the time. Their sperm has the energy of whatever's happening with their life and their lineage as well, right? So mm -hmm. part of that is when you're doing some of this work is to always take into play his energy and whatever he's been through also. And I'm really not saying that specifically for you, Tara, but anybody who's listening also. Yeah, he's on board for all of that. So that's really wonderful. Tell me a little bit about the seeds. What type of seeds do you put? One second and I'll show you real quick. Okay. So this is, this company is called Funkit Wellness. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. They're amazing. So this is the, let me start with this one. This is day one through day 14. So it's just pumpkin seeds and flax seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is the nurture package. And this is, again, to really increase the, um, the estrogen in your body, which is what it needs at that time. And then 14 through 18 is increasing the progesterone. And this is sesame seeds and sunflower seeds. Oh, um, I mm -hmm. What I love about Funkit is that they're pre-ground for you. Um, and not only pre-ground, but the way that they they make it up. And most people, I mean, again, you want to make sure you're doing your food sensitivity test because if you have any sensitivities to those particular seeds, you won't want to do that. But um, for most people, it's such a small amount and that small amount naturally, again, I'm all about trying to figure out what we can ingest from food and whatnot that can really help us balance those hormones. So it's a really, really easy way to go about um, adding things to your diet that for most people are seemingly harm harmless and it's easy to do. So tell us a little bit about some of the tests that you would recommend. Um, so I've done GI tests, I've done hormone panels. What's interesting though, is that I have not been told to do it on day three of my cycle from mm. a lot of the naturopaths that I've been working with. Um, I have this hormone panel, um, but I don't have it on day three of my cycle. And day two or day three, um, it, either one is fine. And the reason that you do that is because, again, it's measuring the, the, the progesterone and what's happening in your cycle. So once your body starts its period, it, because our, our cycle is actually really four, four parts of our cycle, and the period menstrual area is just the last part of that cycle. So during that, we want to make sure that the reason we're testing is because everything is essentially that progesterone. Now we know that an embryo has not attached. So that progesterone and everything that the level of that is changing in a way that we don't need that progesterone to keep increasing to hold a baby in the uterus, right? Whereas if we were trying to get pregnant, we want to keep that progesterone at a level that's rising as it's helping the embryo to stay stuck, so to speak, in the, mm -hmm. in the, um, in the uterus. 
So that's okay. why it's important to do it at that time because the the levels of your body should be again, apples to apples. If I'm testing on day two, one month, and then six months later, I'm testing my hormones again, but it's, you know, day 16, it's going to be showing very different results of where our progesterone and estrogen, estradiol levels would be. I'm also, I just started this month, the Genova Rhythm. I've done a Dutch test. I've done all that, Mm -hmm. but I'm now doing Genova Rhythm, which is the entire month. Um, what do you think about that test? Cause that's supposed to give me a lot of indication of exactly where my hormones are for the entire 28 day cycle. I always think the more information we can know, the better, the, the frustrating part, again, I will say, because I just want people to know it can be extremely frustrating when you've done the Dutch test, you've done all these things, especially when you go down the road of naturopaths or functional doctors, mm-hmm. it's pretty it's intense, right? It's, and it's expensive. So they'll come out of those appointments, you know, spending $900 just in supplements that they got and being told, well, there's not a whole lot we saw or what we, you thought was your issue. Now that you have a whole nother issue that you need to worry about. Right. So for anybody that's on a fertility path, I always say, be really gentle with yourself and give yourself a lot of grace when you're working with naturopaths and functional medicine doctors, as much as I love them, I've seen so much kind of emotional stress come along with it because they feel like I'm just trying to get through one thing. And now I have a bunch of other things that I need to work with. And now my budget is blown out of the water too, because I'm taking all these things or I need to be tested. All that to say, as I started, the more information we can get, the better. So if you're doing this every day of your cycle and you're feeling like the information that they're giving you is accurate and, you know, makes sense to you, then great. There's a lot of other things that people can do that don't cost as much money. It's just the basal body temperature. There's, you know, doing that other, as well. Just yeah. Started. Yeah. Which again, can be something that can be pretty frustrating for people, right? I You can't move or get out of bed until you take your temperature. If you, ha- God forbid, you have to go to the bathroom, you know, you have to make sure you do that first. There's also a few sensors, vaginal sensors that I love on the market. One is called OvuSense and it does basically the same thing. You, It's like a tampon essentially and you put it inside of you and it measures your hormones, it measures your temperature and all those sorts of things. Um, again, it's the technology that is coming out in all these sorts of things is really amazing to help people to really understand their body. I love that. So I just started temp drop. Um, and I have the, I have the pre mom ovulation, like, and the, the app, which is kind of, it's actually very interesting because then you can check your ovulation. It's feel like it's been very good in targeting because it'll be like your LH peak. It'll tell you in the app, like exactly when to have sex, the windows, all of that. Um, but I've been doing this temp drop thing and every morning I'm like under, I'm like 96 degrees. I'm not even like, I'm always under, always cold, I guess. And so when it comes to the the type of technology that you're referring to and ones I was just saying, when you it is technology, right? So it becomes a little bit what I did initially when I, cause I started to do OvuSense again, post baby, I wasn't trying to get pregnant, but I had a lot of clients that I was pushing towards it. So I always want to make sure that I do it before I put it out there to somebody else to do it. I was also tracking, like you said, the basal body on my own to see, was that accurate? Right. Because, and it's just like taking a, um, doing a, what's it like a clear blue easy test, right? And also doing a Amazon P on a stick and something else. You want to triple check. I always say do the trifecta. You want to make sure that all the things you do, are doing actually add up before you put all your eggs in that basket to say, okay, I'm following this app. I know that it's working a hundred percent and whatnot. If you feel like there's some, something that's off, I would contact that company and just say, this is what's going on. Can you just make sure that I don't need to recalibrate anything? Is this really accurate? You know, my basal body is saying one thing and this is saying another thing, you know, just to make sure that that's that's really happening. Now, if it is accurate, then again, going back to your hormones and saying, are all of, is, 
are you getting what you need, right? Are they saying that it's your hormones are completely balanced? And that's another thing that can be super frustrating, Tara, if they're like, we tested your hormones on day two and everything's great. And then you're like, great. You know, I was kind of hoping for you to say, I was just saying that it could be frustrating when you do get your blood work done and your hormone panel comes back, everything's normal, right? Because you're like, I'm looking for something to say, yes, your estrogen's off or your progesterone's off and therefore you can do seed cycling and we'll test it again in three months and see how that is affecting the change. So again, if you're on a a fertility journey, give yourself a lot of grace because it is a very frustrating. And like I said, initially, there's been studies that show that it is. So you're just not thinking that yourself. It's very strenuous on relationships, on friendships, on all the things. So yeah, be really kind to yourself. Thank you so much. Can you tell everyone who's listening where they can go online to learn more about you and your amazing programs? I would love to. At elizabethking.com, you can find information about getting one-on-one coaching and or becoming a fertility coach. I'm like, I'm at this point, I'm like, I should become a fertility coach. I know. (laughs) You're not alone. There are so many people that are so well educated in the experience and the emotional, spiritual experience, right? That know that you can help somebody else. And I know you're on this path right now of the hormone situation of whatever you're doing, but maybe sometime down the line, you'll feel that you want to circle back to fertility and help people do that too. Yes, it's definitely a big, big um, mission of mine now because, you know, it's always like we want to share the information of what we've learned, our struggles. So, even the work, you know, the work that I'm doing with Divine Lifestyles, it's rediscovering your soul's codes. And it was my journey to rediscover mine. So I want to share everything I've learned with others. So um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, It was so lovely to speak about your work and I'm excited to do a private session with you. Thank you so much for having me and and getting all this information out to the world. I think it's helping people to not feel so alone if they're going through it too. That's right. So make sure you check both of us out online because I know I'll be linking everything um, in this episode so people can find you and work with you. Have a beautiful day and I will see you all soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of Divine Lifestyles Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your episodes. If you really loved this episode, screenshot it and share it on social media. It will help us to continue to make an impact. With gratitude and love always, keep illuminating your path.